Lord's messenger was not easy. For instance, you couldn't wake up in the morning and say to yourself, well, let's see, Lord, if you're thinking about giving me a vision today, I think about two this afternoon would be a good time. This morning, I've got so much to do, you know, James, I've got to get him off to work. I've got to get the boys to school and then I need to write some letters. And then of course, um, I need to go visit some people. And if you're thinking today about giving me a vision, why don't you do it about two this afternoon? Didn't work that way. God chose when a vision would be given. Let me just give you one example of a time when I think if Ellen White had had her way, she would not have had the vision when she did. In March of 1858, James and Ellen White were traveling among the scattered little groups of Sabbath-keeping Adventists. And I say Sabbath-keeping Adventists because we didn't take the name Seventh-day Adventists till 1860. So we didn't even have a name yet. But there were several groups of Adventists in the state of Ohio, and they had traveled to various places. And on the weekend of March 13, 14, 1858, they had come to a little place called uh, Lovett's Grove, Ohio. There was a schoolhouse. We had no church building there, so they were holding the meetings that weekend in the church house, or in the schoolhouse, excuse me. And everything was going fine, except on Sabbath, a little baby uh, son of one of the members died. And so, because James White was there, they asked him if he would stay over and have the funeral on Sunday, which he agreed to do. So he had the service, and when he was through, Ellen White stood up and she began to offer a few words of condolence to that grieving family about their little baby boy that had died that James had just had the service for. When all of a sudden she went into vision. Now usually when Ellen White went into vision, she would uh, call out glory to God, sometimes repeating it two or three times. Uh, the record we have is that it sounded every time when she would say glory to God, glory to God. She's physically right there, but it sounded like her voice was getting further and further away. Did that happen this, this time? We don't know because there's no record specifically, but that would have been typical. She was in vision for two hours. Now, funerals in America are, very, are usually very somber occasions. It's not something you would normally want to interrupt. And I'm sure if she'd had her choice, she would not have chosen that venue for this particular vision. But what did God show her? Well, among other things, he showed her what we today call the Great Controversy. It was the Great Controversy vision. And if you stop to think about it from God's perspective, what better place to talk about what Satan has done, the results of sin, the impact of this rebellion that began in heaven, than at a funeral. I mean, right there is the best object lesson, this innocent little baby having just died the day before. Well, they had, she was in vision for two hours, and when she came out, she uh, shared a little bit about what she'd been shown. And the uh, others took the, uh, the casket then to the graveyard to bury the little baby. And she and James then waited, I guess it was the next day, they went on towards uh, Jackson, Michigan. They were headed back from Ohio, the state of Ohio, to Michigan, to eventually to Battle Creek where they lived. As they were traveling on the train up to Jackson, Michigan, Ellen was describing to her husband a bit more about what God had shown her in the vision. As Dr. Roger Kuhn uh, says in his book, he said, I think on that train was an unseen, non-paying passenger. And that un non-paying, unseen passenger was listening intently to what Ellen was describing to James as to what God had said about what this non-paying, unseen passenger had done ever since he rebelled in heaven. And when he heard that God had told Ellen everything, he determined that cannot be published. I cannot allow that to be published. Well, the Whites got to Jackson, Michigan. They were met there by some early believers. In fact, the earliest uh, Sabbath-keeping Adventists in the state of Michigan, the Palmers, Dan and uh, Abigail Palmer. and. Uh, Ellen White then went to their home. They were going to spend a day or two and then travel on to Battle Creek on the train. And while she was there, she had a stroke of paralysis. She was only 31 years of age. They didn't think uh, that she was going to live. They prayed for Ellen White, uh, brought, asked, sent the word around, brought in several other Sabbath keepers to pray for Ellen White. She finally got enough strength 
so that she could get on the train, James could help her and they could make it back to Battle Creek. But she herself later wrote that she didn't think she'd ever see her boys again. She thought she was gonna die from this stroke of paralysis. When she got home, she was so weak they put her to bed. She tells us that eventually she got to where she could write one page and then she was too exhausted and she could not write anymore. Eventually she could write a page a day. She had to wait three, she said she waited three days before she could write the second page. Then she got to where she could write a page a day and then several pages a day. And eventually she completed the manuscript for what we technically call Spiritual Gifts Book One. But it's really the first edition of The Great Controversy. After she had finished the manuscript, so a couple months later, after she'd finished writing the manuscript for that first edition, but before it was actually printed, God gave her another vision and showed her that the stroke of paralysis that she had suffered in Jackson, Michigan, in the home of the Palmers, was Satan trying to kill her. That's why I say that unseen, non-paying passenger who was listening intently as Ellen was describing, determined he could not ever allow that book to be written. So when you and I read, because later Ellen White expanded the Great Controversy, eventually she does five whole volumes in what we today call the Conflict of the Ages series, Patriarchs and Prophets, Prophets and Kings, Desire of Ages, Acts of the Apostles, and the Great Controversy. But just remember that that series of books, especially the Great Controversy book, almost cost Ellen White her life. So just remember, Satan does not want us to read The Great Controversy.